What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas, and today I wanted to do a video on uh, some kind of different types of long plays I have. Um, you know, the title is Longing Frontside with the Trend, uh, which is essentially what the video is about. But um, I also give you kind of a mixture of some of the longer term, I guess, well, longer term for me, trade ideas that uh, I've kind of been having over the past couple months, and uh, also some scalp ideas that I have, uh, you know, that I've been kind of doing over the past couple months as well. Uh, just a reminder, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Uh, this isn't investment advice, even if it seems so. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Uh, so the criteria. This is kind of a long slide, and the reason is is because there's a couple of things that I kind of want to touch on. Probably the number one thing is just the consistent volume. I just like to see consistent volume happening, you know, over kind of a longer time frame, rather than just you know some you know a lot of volume at the open and uh, the stock fades. So uh, what I like is high consistent volume, uh, lower float, but you know it's not technically a requirement. I've seen floats run <laughs> that have been 30 mil, 40 mil, and a lot of people think, oh well it's a higher float so it can't run, and then it's easy to borrow and short sellers get trapped. Uh, another one, no death candles. I really don't like longing after death candles. Um, Unless there's a certain scenario, which I am going to touch on in this video, uh, I like it trading above VWAP, you know, and also it does come with experience. So that's one thing that I would kind of kind of recommend and kind of just just, you know, something to think about is that you don't get these on your first day, your second day or your third day. It comes after months of study and you start to recognize uh, when something is going to keep running and when something is stuffing into a resistance level. And that's something that I'm going to talk about too. So it does come with experience and a lot of these plays have been really good longs uh, with the coronavirus stocks running. But also something to touch on is that this is also a sector play and this doesn't happen all the time. So the things that are making you win right now, uh, are they going to make you win in six, seven months when the coronavirus stocks uh, stop running. Well, I hope they stop running. I hope we get this fire solved. But, uh, are, you know, it's something to think about. Are these strategies that you're using right now in the market actually consistent strategies that you can repeat every single day? And, you know, Alex and Bao, everyone everyone has a, a process that they use every day. And it's it's the same process that I use uh, when these Corona stocks are, are running as well. So it's just something to think about that these moves do come with experience. So, we saw a lot of big moves happen recently, and you know we're not going to always get those in six, seven months. So it's just important to know what you're trading and know the market environment, know the market market sediment. You know, the more you watch these types of tickers, the better prepared you can be for the future, which is totally true. There's different types of setups. There's different types of of different different patterns. But one thing that you you can know is that. The more experience and the more time you have watching, uh, and the more you study, uh, the better, the better chance that you'll have to nail these type of moves. Uh, I also I don't like stuff moves, so I'm going to talk about this as well. And these are almost exclusively day one movers. That's really all I focus on as a long trader. Day two, uh, significantly less odds. You're always going to see that one day two stock that runs and think, oh, should I be paying attention to day twos every time? No, just stick to day ones. That's what I do. We do, as I just said, get the occasional day two, but that's not necessarily what I'm looking for. So how I like to buy. I love to buy dips in support or a prior resistance level. Uh, I like a healthy pullback that's holding but not a death candle. There's a very fine line between something that is pulled back and it's a nice healthy pullback between a death candle when all the longs just get screwed 
and every pop is, you know, just being sold into. So I like healthy pullbacks, but I don't like death candles. And it's really kind of up to you to differentiate what your comfort zone is. I know some people that, uh, you know, it's pretty crazy, but they are they love to long after a death candle for some reason. Uh, that's just not me. I like to uh, just pay attention to the front side, and I let the short seller step in and get the back side. And yeah, could I probably short some of these moves on the backside? I totally could, but it's really satisfying for me to just nail the front side of the move and to say, okay, I know that this move is kind of over. And, you know, I see it all the time in pre-market where I'm texting James and James is like, fuck, why aren't you shorting this, bro? And I'm like, nah, I just like to watch the backside because he's like, you know, I know that you caught kind of the front side of this move. I'm like, yeah, man, just check this out. And, uh, He's like, man, you should be shorting the pops with me. And I'm like, nah, I just like to, to kind of watch the backside unfold. It's kind of satisfying. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I love to see a stock wash out or I love to see a stock, you know, die and, and come back to life. Those are all, all things that I like. Um, news really doesn't matter to me. I, I hear a lot of people and they say to me, well, it had, they got a $30 million contract. It's like, man, you don't know the details of that. You don't know what's going on in that. You know, I just need a PR for, for it purely to be a reason to be up. I hear a lot of large cap traders talk about it, a good catalyst. Well, none of these catalysts in small cap world are really great catalysts. We may get one or two or three a quarter where, you know, we get amazing phase two or phase three news or something like that. But for the most part, we're not going to get that type of action every day. So all I need is just a simple PR that will suffice for me. The rest of it, I don't really dig into the news too deeply. Uh, I like to kind of know the story. Yeah, I read it over, but I'm not going to fall in love with the news. I'm not going to say, oh, well, even though it's fading and even though it's under death line, they still got that $30 million contract or they still, you know, are projecting this much revenue or man, there's a merger involved. So they're going to make millions. You know, I, I don't fall in love with the news. The news is just uh, a simple reason for the stock to be up. Uh, volume is really the most important part. Uh, who is stuck is the most, is the most important part. Uh, you know, is it easy to borrow? You know, what stock, what is the stock's distance from VWAP? That is very important to me. And I don't like to be chasing the stock. The distance from VWAP tells me how far... Uh, VWAP to me is more so kind of like an equilibrium where if it gets too far away from VWAP, I really don't like to long it. If it gets, you know, too far below VWAP, I don't like to long it. I kind of like to long in that kind of middle range area. And that tells me uh, personally kind of, it's more so kind of like a gauge to me. So if it's under VWAP, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind longing too much. Uh, you know, if it's under view up and close under view up, I mean, you know, it, it, that's kind of the area where it's like, okay, like it's, it's still not completely dead yet. But if it's too under view up, then I'm um, probably not going to long it until it gets a little bit closer. And then you get into the issues like I talked about in my last video with the VWAP stuffs and stuff like that. So I just use VWAP as an equilibrium with my lines to try and tell me uh, who's stuck and kind of the psychology of some of these moves. So this is a trade that I had yesterday actually and this was a sector play and I just kind of want to go over my thought process on it. So uh, number one I wrote here, yeah, it's a sector play. Number two, we had this consistent volume. We had this big ramp up at the open and to be honest this wasn't even on my screen I was only looking at day ones I was only paying attention to stocks that were up for the first day but I did have kind of some corona stocks in the back of my head saying okay we are kind of due for a bounce here but let's wait until 10 and see what kind of direction they take and they did take a direction we had a strong opening drive from INO and you know it kind of got saved into this these are the type of resistance lines that I like to kind of buy into like the these types of lines it really depends on the on the type of setup and how far it has to fall and the distance from VWAP and uh, there's a ton of stuff that goes into uh, where I want to buy but for the most part I just like to buy the pullback so anyway what we notice what we notice here is that I just kind of bought the pullback and sold into this kind of stuff move into 850 and some things that I noticed about this trade prior to me making it was that the first pullback was saved it was easy to borrow uh, I waited for the stock to show their cards before the entry and this is important I waited for the stock to kind of develop a trend because this stock could have easily bounced up and came down and made a, a lower high and kept fading. But instead, it kept kind of trending up. 
And that was something that I really paid attention to. So I waited for the stock to show their cards before the entry. It was above VWAP. You know, notice how I don't try and be a hero and just long dips. Notice how I didn't try and long this one or long this one or long this one. I'm just trying to make sure that it establishes a trend. And by the time it kind of got up to the 750 area, I was saying, okay, this is probably going to break high day. This stock is pretty strong. We're doing, you know, constant volume. It's not over dying down like it is over here. We're doing consistent volume. We're gunning for new highs. Every dip is being bought up something that I'm kind of paying attention to. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys can message me anytime. I'm always here. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.